Okay, continuing on from our previous lesson, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the mathematical operators. Now, the mathematical operators that we talked about were plus, minus, um, divide, and multiply. Now, the multiply is not an x, it's a star. Right? Um, now, these are all called binary, uh, binary operators. Okay, and a binary operator is uh, called a binary operator because it requires two numbers to be operated on. Okay, so it doesn't make sense to say, hey, just add three or multiply nine. Um, you have to have another product or another um, number to add to or multiply by or divide by or something like that. Uh, so that's why they're called binary because binary means two and so you need two numbers. Now modulus, which is a percentage sign, is also um, a binary operator. And the thing with modulus is that it's actually a really important and very, very useful um, part of computer science, okay? especially in programming. It allows us to do some uh, a few neat things. And I'll show you an example of this here. Okay, so it's... Okay. So what we can do, uh, let's, first of all, I'm going to review what the modulus is. Okay, so if, for instance, I took like a number, some division operation like 7 divided by, or 22 divided by 7, what we would say is that this went into it three times. So 7 can go into 22 three times. And then what that means is we have represented 21 of those numbers and we have one left. Okay, and so what we would do is we'd have a remainder of 1. So we'd say um, 22 divided by 7 is equal to 3 remainder 1. Okay, and so what we do is say 22 divided by 7 is equal to 3. Um, 22 modulus 7 is equal to 1. Okay, so the modulus is the remainder of this division operation. Now, one of the things that uh, you can use the modulus for is to check for divisibility and to see if one fa number is a factor of another number. So let's just use a, a similar example here. Okay, so let's say, for instance, I used 21 divided by 7. Okay, well, what I'd get is it go into three times, then you'd find out you'd have a zero remainder. Okay, now what that means is is that there's nothing left over, which means that this number divides evenly into this number. So what we can do in computer science is what we can we can ask the computer if one number modulus another number is equal to zero. And what that will tell us is if that number is a factor of another number. Okay, sometimes it's just really important to know that. Uh, for instance, like um, if you want to check if a number is even, you can uh, tell the computer to divide to do a modulus two operation. Okay, so if I had some number x, I could say, well, let's not use x. Let's use y. Okay, modulus two, and what I would ask the computer is it equal to zero. Okay, so I'd say something like this. So y modulus two equals zero. Okay, if this is true, that means that y is an even number. Okay, if it's not, then it must be an odd number, or uh, or it could be one. Okay. Now another thing you can do with modulus is that uh, you can use the property that uh, modulus has that it can never a modulus the result of modulus can never be greater than the divisor. Okay, so for instance. It is impossible, um, let's say I have some number x, and we're dividing it by 7, and we want to know what the modulus is. Okay, it is impossible for it to be some number remainder 8. Right? The reason why is because if there was 8 left over, that means we could have done one more division, um, and so that's not a complete division operation. Okay, and it can even be modulus 7. The only numbers that you can have from this would be zero to six, right? and that's the only thing that would uh, that would make sense. Okay, and to put it as a concrete example, okay, so it wouldn't make sense. Let's say, for instance, if I said, well, if I had uh, twenty-two divided by seven, this is the same as what I just did. Um, for me to say, hey, you know what, um, this is two goes in two times, so that's fourteen, and then I'd have 
8 left over, so 2 remainder 8. Okay, now, well, technically true, this is not generally how we express uh, this, the results of this sort of expression. Um, so what we would do, okay, what we should do is say that, well, because it's remainder 8, it means that we, this 2 that we had put there is not enough. So what we have to do is put a 3 there, okay, then we got 21 down here, and it's 3 remainder 1. Okay, so what you should be able to see is that the remainder of the modulus, or the remainder of the operation, which is the modulus, can never be greater than the divisor, can never be bigger than this number, and it can also never be less than zero. Okay, so for instance, I could not say, well, I generally would not say that this is four, okay, and then go 28, and get a negative six, and just say, hey, you know, a remainder negative six. Um, generally, we don't do that either. Okay, so property of the modulus is that um, the modulus can be between zero and one less than the divisor. Now this is a useful uh, feature because uh, it allows us to use a cyclical nature of ascending numbers. So what it means, what that means is that if I have a number pattern, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I apply, let's say, a modulus three to each of these, Okay, well, 0 modulus 3 um, is equal to 0. 0 modulus 1 is 1. Zero, or 2 modulus 3 is 2. 3 modulus 3 now divides evenly again. And what that allows, what that means is I get a 0. Now, 4 modulus 3 is 1. 5 modulus 3 is 2. And 6 modulus 3, that's uh, down 6 is divisible by 3. Which, I'm sorry, this. 6 modulus 3 is equal to 0 again. And so you can see. Uh, what we can do is we can establish a number pattern uh, based off of this number pattern. Okay. Now, in computer science, it's really easy to get the computer to generate a sequential number pattern like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, the modulus allows us to change that number pattern uh, to something else like 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, uh, going on to infinity. And that's actually a really, really useful uh, quality. Another thing that you can do, for instance, uh, is that, uh, let's say, for instance, you want to know what day of the week it is. Uh, it's going to be 100 days from now. Right. Well, what you could do is you could say, well, um, if today is a Friday, um, and then take 100 modulus 7, okay, and then uh, what you do is you would find the modulus, okay, and then you would know if the modulus was 0, then that 100 days from now would be also a Friday. If the modulus was 1, then it would be a Saturday. If the modulus was 2, then it would be a Sunday, and so on and so forth. So um, it's actually really, really useful for examining uh, different features of numbers and it's great for problem solving. Okay. The other two that I wanted to talk about are something called unary operators. Okay, so they're called unary operators. Okay, now unary uh, means one. And so what this means, if you have a unary operator, it's an operator that only requires one thing to operate on. Um, the unary operators have to work with variables, and they can't work with uh, constant numbers. Okay, so the unary operators I want to talk about today are plus plus and minus minus. Now, what plus plus does is it adds one to a number, and minus minus subtracts one from a number. Okay, so if you're going to use plus plus, okay, it, you can only use it with a variable. So if I have like number plus plus. Okay, so in this case, I set the number to be equal to 10 here. So once I say number plus plus, then the number will become 11. Okay, I don't need this comparison here, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, um, what this means then is that you only need one thing to operate on, but it has to be a variable. It doesn't make sense if I said something like 8 plus plus, because there's no way that you could make 8 to be equal to 9. Right, so the computer would not like this and would actually give you an error and reject your um, reject your code. Okay, so it has to be a variable. Now, this thing is pretty simple here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you an example. I'll move this down here. Okay, so I'm going to ask the the uh, user for a number and the computer will add one to that number and then print it out. So no matter what the user enters, it should always uh, add one to it. So if I say the number is equal to 10, 
Okay, and they're going to say it's the number is 11. Okay, similarly, if I say the number is 3, okay, then the computer replies that the number is 4. Okay, because what it's done here is it's added 1 to the number and then spit it back out at me. Um, and basically, that's what that is. Now, as I said, it doesn't make sense if you use something like this, so please don't do, uh, use this with a number constant. Okay, now, uh, similarly, I can use minus minus, and that will sub that will subtract one from the number. Okay, and I'll just show a quick example of this. So if I put in the number eight, the computer is going to say the number is seven. Okay, now one thing is that we can also put the the plus plus or the minus minus in front of the variable. Okay, and let's see what that does. Okay, so it's asking me for the number. I'm going to say four. Okay, and it responds and says the number is five. Now, this means that basically um, it does the same thing. Okay, so plus plus number and number plus plus essentially do the same thing. However, they are not exactly the same. Now, one of the things you should uh, know is that in computer science, um, you can Computer scientists really don't like redundancy. They're all about efficiency. So it wouldn't make sense to have two different commands that would do the same thing. So what we we have to ask is, well, what's the difference then? Because since they appear to do the same thing. And what we can do is we can tell that uh, the difference by introducing an equation. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the this here because it doesn't really do anything anyways. Um, and I'm going to get rid of the prompt. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set number to equal to 10, as I had before. Okay, now, if I run this program just as is, it's just going to say the number is 10. Okay, so the number is 10. Now, what I can do is I'm going to apply an equation to this and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to say um, int result is equal to number plus plus times, or we'll say seven times number plus plus. Okay, and I'm going to change this to result. Okay, so in this case, it says the result is 70. Now that's kind of odd, because I said this should be 7 times number plus plus, and the number was 10. So shouldn't it have been 7 times 11 and be 77? Okay, uh, but it said it was 70. Let's move the plus plus to the other side of the variable and see what happens now. Okay, in this case, it's 77. Okay, now, what does this mean? Well, what it comes down to is order of operations. So when I say plus plus a number, it, what it does is it does it, to, it does the plus plus first before any other operation. Okay, if I do number plus plus, it does that last, after every other operation, including the equal sign. So when I said number plus plus, what it did is it said seven times 10, set the result okay, to be 70 and then added the, nu the one to the number. So number is still 11 at the end um, and I can prove it by uh, putting the number here. Okay, so you can see the result is 70, the number is 11. Okay, and so what that means is that, as I said, uh, the number plus plus happens at the end of the order of operations, and plus plus number happens at the beginning. Okay, and the same goes for minus minus. Okay, and so that's those those three special mathematical operators, um, and those are pretty important, and we use them all the time. So it's essential to really understand how they work. Okay, uh, once again, if you have uh, any questions, uh, put a comment in the comment box or send me a message. If you have, uh, if you have enjoyed this video, please uh, thumb, give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, then please subscribe.